Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Brian Turney, the CEO of Kingman Regional. Thanks for being here, Brian. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> we were talking earlier about some of the physicians we brought to Kingman, and recruiting physicians is a challenge, no doubt about it, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it is uh, a challenge, especially in rural areas. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, and it's been a challenge in Kingman for a long time. Uh, I am excited though. We've had, I think, more success in the past five years than we've had in the previous uh, 15 or 20. Probably. And uh, it's, it's been exciting to see some of the new young physicians that have joined us and bring their expertise to the community. Yep, that's great. I know we talked about, we've got um, Dr. Montero, obviously in our open heart program, and Dr. Nagel at the Cancer Center. Um, the surgeons, Dr. Gonzalez and Dr. Caprillas. Yeah, both uh, trained at Grady in both uh, general surgery as well as trauma surgery and uh, that they've been great additions as well. And Dr. Otero, our gastroenterologist. Right. Um, what other specialties are we looking for right now? Um, we're looking for an endocrinologist. We've had a heck of a time trying to find an uh, endocrinologist and uh, it's not u unique to Kingman. Uh, we've talked with uh, cities all over Arizona, hospitals around the state, and they're struggling with the same things. Mm. But we could use an endocrinologist, a rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. We still need some primary care, uh, some other surgical specialties. Um, had a lot of luck bringing some new anesthesiologists into oh, good, town. Good. Uh, um, and uh, we've got a real strong group of anesthesiologists. And you know, sometimes people think about open heart surgery, for example, and they think of the surgeon, but you need anesthesiologists that have expertise Right. and open heart and you know Dr. Lunn and Dr. Freitalk have joined us mm -hmm. um, both trained at Mayo as well and uh, um, we're just I just feel fortunate we've been able to bring that caliber physician here. Absolutely and I think part of it again KRMC has had a big part in supporting the community and the programs and events because we you and I have talked about that we don't just recruit the physician or the healthcare professional it's their families as well and so we do support a lot of the events like the street drags and the rodeo and the fair and to make sure that there are things going on in the community for those families to stay involved with we support their education programs in the high schools well at Kingman Unified and the Academy yeah. Well, that's important. I think that uh, when you're recruiting a physician, you're also recruit recruiting their spouse as mm -hmm. well, and um, and that need we need to have a community that they feel comfortable coming to. Right. And, and uh, Kingman's a nice place, and it uh, and it's it's getting easier and easier um, that's good. to show. That's good. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about your passion of running, but before we do, there's kind of that one topic that we should probably at least touch on here, and that's our recent acquisition of the Wallapai Mountain Medical Center that just happened a couple weeks ago now. And there's been a lot of speculation in the community, you know, why we did it and what's going to happen. Do you want yeah. to share anything about sure. that? Sure. Well, I know not everybody's crazy about that <laughs> move, but, um, you know, quite honestly, after that facility was built, um, at a after a period of time, um, the company Medcalf decided that they uh, were going to sell the facility. And uh, quite honestly, it was on the market for over a year. I think it was probably 14, 15 months before we even had any kind of discussions with them. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of other companies that came in and took a look. Mm -hmm. And it's a tough market right now for healthcare. It's difficult. Right. And uh, they weren't able to sell that. And it got to the point uh, when we started to take a look at it that um, when you just look at it from a, a, a long-term facility standpoint and what our needs are going to be we were planning on expanding our facility uh, before that facility was built and uh, the cost of that was much more than what we ended up paying for this mm -hmm. facility so you look at that and we also um, it's kind of unique with the Medicare system but we do get some extra reimbursement so uh, that's um, helps which is some of you know those costs. you know we didn't create that but bottom lines we have to be aware of that mm -hmm. and uh, um, so when we just looked at it it, it really just made a, a lot of sense for us and we're going to look long term how we're going to use that we're talking about maybe you know we're possibly moving our women's services over there or orthopedics mm -hmm. or acute rehab. We still got a, a ways to, to go to, to do our planning process, but um, but uh, we just feel like that we'll be able to put good use to that facility. Right. And uh, Well, and so much better than if it was just an empty building sitting there. Obviously, we're going to be able to do some things long term with it yeah. that will eventually you know, 
benefit the whole community. Yeah, no but. short term basis. We'll do sur we'll plan on doing surgery out there. We okay. do have a pretty busy OR and uh -huh. uh, that will release some of the conditions with our current OR and uh, we'll be able to service people on a limited basis over there in the short term. Great. Okay, well that I think at least answers a few of those questions that might be out there and I wanted to at least address it. Cause sure. <laughs> But now I want to talk about running, because I know that's a passion of yours. It's one of the things that's, I know running's a great stress reliever. And I've got a great video that we got from Mayo. It's their program called Medical Edge that they share with us. And it talks about a marathon running group. So let's watch it together. Okay. Marathons, 10Ks, bike rides, and telethons. Events to raise money for diseases like cancer seem to happen all the time. Many of these fundraisers really do make a difference in the race to find a cure. More on how one marathon is raising money to help researchers learn about cancer genes so they can work towards developing better treatments. They're running for their moms, sisters, daughters, and friends. 26.2 miles to raise money for breast cancer research. I was first diagnosed in 1999. Uh, small, uh, invasive ductal carcinoma. Uh, went in and got it out, went through chemo, and thought I was finished. Then in 2002, it came back. Donna Deegan is a breast cancer survivor, news anchor, and founder of the 26.2 with Donna Marathon. I've always been a runner. Donna went through treatment three different times. Now Donna's joined forces with Mayo Clinic Dr. Edith Perez to raise money that will hopefully help finish breast cancer. With this money, we have started a brand new program here at Mayo called the Breast Cancer Translational Genomics Program. So the question is, what does that mean? Well, we're looking at what we call transcriptional profiling to identify all of the mutations present in the setting of breast cancer. Dr. Perez says there's lots of research going into why breast cancer happens, how it spreads, and why some tumors respond to treatment while others don't. Her research will add to that body of information. So our task is to help identify the pathways that are really important for breast cancer so that then we can identify proper targets for management and potentially to develop new treatments. New treatments born out of research funded in part by people who want survivors like Donna to remain cancer free. For more information on breast cancer, breast cancer research, or the 26.2 with Donna, visit mayoclinic.org. I'm Vivian Williams. Marathons. I have to admit, I've never run one, but you're training for two, I understand. Yeah, I've got one coming up in October in uh, St. George, Utah, and then one in Santa Barbara, California oh in goodness. November. So, wow. Yeah. So you're on a training regimen, obviously, to get ready for that. Yeah, you have to put a lot of miles in to, to get ready for that. How many shoes do you go through? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go through a few, actually. So. I can't even imagine. So, But, I mean, you've been running for a long time. Is that that go back to your young day? I mean, when you were in high school, or when did no, you start? No, I, I mean, I was involved with athletics when I was young, but um, quite honestly, I started it uh, when I became a CEO. It oh, was really? a stress reliever. Okay. And uh, it was just a good way for me to deal with stress mm -hmm. and to, um, to feel better. And um, I'm, I'm glad I did it. Good. It's, it's, uh, well, it helps Good you stay in shape, obviously, yeah. and then it helps, like you said, with the stress. And I know people talk about all the time that they're driving down the road, oh, I saw Brian running this morning or yeah. this evening, and yeah. <laughs> I said, well, don't honk when you, while yeah, you're... Yeah, every once in a while they scare me, they <laughs> yeah. honk, and so at least they don't run over me. That's, that's a, right, that's, that's, that's good, true. So. Well, and it's a challenge, you know, sometimes you don't always have the best shoulders and sidewalks or anything for safe places for running. So where do you usually go out in the desert? Or? You know, up in the Wallapai foothills area. Okay. I tend to run on roads that not where you don't have too many cars. Traffic, and yeah. um, then there's trails. There's a lot of trails uh, oh. along the foothills of the uh, Wallapai. So sometimes I'll do a lot of trail running. So Okay. And there's, uh, there's almost a running club now, isn't there too, here in Kingman? That yeah, it's starting. There's a little club started up. And it's, I, I think it's neat to see that. There's yeah. some people that are better runners than I am <laughs> uh, that have started that. And, uh, um, but it's nice to uh, it create some camaraderie. And uh, for example, one of our physician's wives, when she came here, she's a runner. And uh, it was a way for her to make a connection really quickly. So. Good, yeah. Now, so your ultimate goal, you've got these two marathons. Is there something else after that that you're going to go for? No, I've, I've done four or five already. And um, I think that uh, 
you know, my wife kind of teases me because I say this is my last <laughs> one, and then I end up doing another one. So, but I don't know. It's just a chance. You know, you can set some goals mm -hmm. and you work towards something. And uh, I, right now, I'm thinking I'll shorten the distances to half marathons. <laughs> you know, 26 miles is a That's long way. It's a long ways. And, uh, it is <laughs> a lot of training, but uh, we'll see. It's just okay. it's it's a well, fun it's, to do though. Yeah, and it's a, obviously the, that challenge, and then you that accomplishment for having succeeded is right. a big thing as well. So if um, it's, it's that running club that we talked about, is that a group? Like is there someone, a way to join it or you just find them running and you join in? Yeah, they've actually got a little uh, site and I don't have it with me okay. as far as the, where you can they post when they, they meet together on Saturdays or during okay. the middle of the week at a certain time and whoever wants to show up shows up. Well, I know Chris Brady in my department probably knows about that too so they could call me at 757-0664 yeah. and I can put him in touch with Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is actually Chris and Carrie Irvine are the kind of the two people that really are kind of the ones that kind of spearheaded that. Great. Great Very people. Good. Now, if people have other questions, I know that I've always been impressed, Brian, with the fact that you pretty much have an open door policy. And if people have questions or concerns about Kingman Regional, they can call you. Sure. They call the course. main number and 757-2101, I think, is our main hospital number. And yeah, and they may take a, they may have to leave a message, message or yes, something like that, <laughs> but I do return phone calls. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, people can call and just kind of leave a message what it's about, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm happy to talk to them. Okay, and we have, um, on our website, there's a lot more information there at azkmc.com that talks about all the services and programs that we offer. and. So I think, and I think we're also always looking for information about other services that maybe the community feels it needs. Right. So that's another good way for us to stay in touch with what the needs are out there. Right. So they can look at what's coming up. And um, we've had a great show today. I appreciate you taking the time to be on the program with me. Oh. <laughs> and my friend's joining me again, yeah. McFly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us. Again, visit our website at azkrmc.com if you'd like to learn more about the programs and services we have, or call me at 757-0664 if you have ideas for programs in the future. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm.